Welcome in. There you go. It's the Arrowhead Attic Chiefs post game show. Sorry, guys, I was looking at the wrong feed, so I had a delay. I was over at YouTube. I thought you were like jump. just waiting. I thought you were just letting the <laughs> intensity just draw itself out. I was like, wow, I, yeah, Patrick, I, look at the nuance. I, I, I that yeah that, that let's go with that that's what I was doing. Welcome in the Arrowhead Attic Chiefs post game show. The Kansas City Chiefs absolutely thrashed the Arizona Cardinals today, forty four to twenty one. And let me tell you, if you didn't watch the game, it was not that close. Um, here with a great crew tonight: Matt Verderam, you know; Sterling Holmes, you know; some of you know. Adam Vest, the co-founder and blog father of Arrowhead Addict. He joined me a few weeks back on this show. He is now joining the show. Officially, he's back. He's going to be doing a show on Wednesdays with Sterling Home. So you get more Sterling Home and you get the blog father, Arrowhead Addict founder, Adam Vest, back. Adam, how you doing, man? Welcome back to the party. Picked a good night to show up, right? Excellent night. Yeah, I think this is probably a good sign. You joining the team again and bringing more great Chiefs content to our listeners obviously had an effect on Patrick Mahomes and the offense. We're really excited to have you back. Welcome to the victory party. Matt Connor may be joining us a little bit later once he finishes up his editorial duties on the site. So I got to get to some business so we can get to some celebrating and let you know I've got my bucket of Kansas City beer here ready for the victory party they are our sponsors the kansas city beer company i'm gonna let you listen to this as i crack one open here look at that ah uh, yes here we go hats off to at casey beer co on twitter uh they are our longtime sponsors of this podcast absolutely fantastic beer i'm rocking a hefeweizen right now did i say that right hefeweizen hefeweizen yeah. i think you get the v in there um Absolutely fantastic beer. Sterling has drank all of his and has to get more over there at the brew house. But listen, you guys know largest locally owned brewery in Kansas City. Only way to celebrate a Kansas City Chiefs victory is with Casey Beer. All German beer styles, all fantastic. Brewed with the German purity laws. What is it, 15, 16? Uh, it doesn't matter. The Chiefs won. Go tag at Casey Beer Co. on Twitter. Let them know you heard about their beer on our podcast and dare to beer different of course you got to be 21 or older all right let's get into it fellas let's just go off the top as we're letting some of our listeners get in here initial reactions to the game let's start with our uh our new co-host adam best what'd you think buddy i'm relieved i, I thought uh first off i was super nervous about juju he looks fantastic he looks like the, the last three years just never happened you know like he got you know, blipped out in the MCU or something and just showed up three years later, same old 2018 Juju. So I think that was tremendous. Uh, the second thing I noticed, even with Trey Smith going down, Nick Allegretti steps in, the interior offensive line just looks phenomenal. Mahomes had all day sitting back there in the pocket. Uh, and then Chris Jones, when you actually start the season playing him at the position where he belongs – Great things tend to happen, right? Yeah. What a uh, what a concept, playing your best player at his natural position. Um, yeah, we're going to get into it all. We're going to break it down. But just sort of those this 50,000-foot view, Matt Verderan. So, look, I don't think you could ask for much more. Like, consider this. They won the game by 23 points, at, which is the largest margin of victory, by, this way, by the way, in week one for any team to this point. Um they didn't even try in the fourth quarter. Like, they just stopped playing. They started yanking everybody, and they were just running the ball into the line of scrimmage, and they still won by 23 on the road against a team that made the playoffs last year. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Look, other than the fact we're waiting here on a few injuries, none of which seemed, like, horrible. But other than that, what else could you be upset about? I mean, Mahomes was incredible. They spread the ball around. Kelsey, everybody keeps waiting for his demise. He, he looked pretty damn good. The offensive line, I thought, was, was very good. Um, defensively, they gave up seven points in the first three quarters. They had tons of pressure. Like, I know they didn't sack Murray a ton. They harassed him the whole game. The whole game. I mean, how many times was he running for his life throwing the ball? So I really was impressed. I thought they played a really, really good game. Murray only threw, by the way, for a buck 93, which is made more impressive when you consider that they had to throw the ball constantly 
and the Chiefs were allowing some easy yardage the last couple drives he had. He only averaged 5.7 yards per attempt. The Chiefs ran the ball for 128 yards, 4.7, and it wasn't like Mahomes gave him a bunch of free yards. He only ran for five yards. Pacheco was great at 62 yards, basically all of them in the fourth quarter. Um, I don't know where, what else to say. They had three sacks. Wharton, Dunlap, and Snead all had them. Uh, they gave up zero sacks. You can't ask for much more than that. You know, hopefully Smith and McDuffie are, are back real soon. Um, but, man, I mean, what else could you want from that game? And we're going to get to Sterling Holmes. I want his thoughts. He's ready to go. Before we do, though, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a solid, okay? Hit that thumbs up button. This is the Chiefs victory party. We need to get as many of the Chiefs kingdom members in here as possible. So hit that thumbs up button. And if you like this podcast, and if you want to know what Sterling thinks, and he's going to tell you in just a minute, you would already know if you were a member because you would have been hanging out with us during the game in the Arrowhead Attic Discord, which is for members only. There's a lot of other great benefits. If you're interested in that, you can join right now during this show. You can join live. Check out the link in the description. Uh, we would love to meet more of you. There's special events. Uh, we have a fantasy football league, tons of fun stuff. So hope to meet some of you guys if this is your first time here. All right, Sterling, you've had to wait. The Chiefs won. They won big. What do you think? Well, how many touchdowns would have Mahomes thrown if he was the most accurate quarterback in the NFL? That's the real issue here. Uh, uh, yes. I mean, he, he may, maybe he would have thrown seven or eight, obviously. No, there's a new number 10 in town, and he looks damn good wearing it. Mahomes was insane. The offensive line was fantastic. This was one of the most balanced games we have watched in a long time. For periods, it'd go, wow, the offense looks great, but the defense can't stop a nosebleed. Or, okay, the defense isn't bad, but they can't stop anyone on the ground. Or the cornerbacks are getting cooked. Or it's Mahomes and no one else. No, no, no. This was a great team win. Great schemes from Andy Reid. We saw a ton of two and three tight end sets, which I'll dive into a yes. little bit later on. But this was a hell of an ass kicking week one. I don't think Mahomes, the Chiefs, are out here listening to first take or listening to all the national media heads talking about, oh, the Chargers are going to be the Chiefs. But they hear a little bit. They don't need extra motivation. But when they go out and put on an ass kicking display like this, it makes you wonder. Oh, oh, I hope they're Burger. watching first take. I, I just want to go ahead. Burger. There. I, just, I just saw a stat that I had to say. Nate Tice, uh, I believe the athletic, uh, put this out there. The Chiefs ran 66 plays on offense today, including a lot of garbage time plays. They had 33 first downs. So <laughs> that's every ridiculous. other play, they just moved the stick. Eesh. And you yeah. factor it again, like how many, like 16, 17 of those plays were just complete garbage time, them running the ball. So the, they, in essence, were essentially averaging more than like a first down every other play. Um, just, look, you know what? This is a, a big overarching point, but I think it matters in, in, a, in a greater sense. How many teams today came out that have expectations, whether it's to be a good playoff team or a Super Bowl caliber team, and crap their pants? The Bengals crap their pants. The Rams on Thursday night, total ass crapping, right? Just a disaster. You, you, look, at, you look at the Packers, awful, like, awful performance. Um, I mean, for some people, the Raiders. Carr comes out and throws three picks, right? You look at all these games. The Titans just lost at home to the Giants. Okay. All the Niners games. lost to the Bears. Yeah. The, the good call. Niners. Losing. The Saints almost lost to Atlanta. Now, they won, give them credit, but they almost lost. The Chiefs came out and just hammered Arizona. It was never close. It was never in doubt. It wasn't one of these games where they held on and they got lost. They lost the turnover battle. Like, and it, it just didn't matter. They, they hung 44 on him. If they wanted to, they would have hung 58 on him. Like, to me, that's where you look at them and go, like, that's being built different. The Colts had a tie in Houston and, like, had to, had to work a miracle to do that. That's not like, – Kansas City just went out on the road and absolutely plowed Arizona. And that speaks to who they've been for a long time under Randy Reid. It was absolutely fantastic. Shout out. We've got a new member of the Arrowhead Attic family supporting the show. Big Red 88 definitely is Andy Reid. I'm, I'm 100% sure. Appreciate you, man. See you in the Discord. Shoot me a DM in there and say hi. I want to get to know you. Um, I, I want to give a shout out. When you guys support the show when we're live like this, 
it's friggin' awesome, man. It really helps us keep going. It helps us expand. Like we're bringing Adam in. We're doing more things and newsletters coming. So appreciate you, Ryan O'Rourke. Here's to the first post game podcast of the 2022 season. Y'all the best chiefs win. Let's fucking go. Absolutely. Um, and then our guy gaming bros, uh, what a, what a game, baby. Love you guys. And our, and our guy, Nate S who's celebrating six months as a member. Um, he says, hopefully the, the banged up guys are okay. Thursday night's going to be fun. Don't want to see uh, anyone stopping Mahomes when he plays like that. No, absolutely not. And welcome Matt Shaw and John Best. Couple new members. Uh, I think I might know who that is. Um, all right, let's get into the offense. And I've got one word as we head into you know talking about the offense. And of course, let us know in the chat what you think. Uh, we want to interact with you guys and hear from you throughout the course of the show. We'll try to highlight as many of you as we can. The big word that jumps out at me when I think about how the offense performed tonight was effortless, right? I mean, this is a team that last year struggled at times. They still put up a lot of points. They were still really, really good. Maybe not as efficient as they had been in years past, but this was just like a hot knife through butter. And I mean, just Verderam brought it up in the stats. It was almost like they weren't getting, I wasn't sitting there very often being like, oh, it's third down. Are we going to convert? You know, <laughs> they weren't jumping off sides. They just were executing. Mahomes was under center, play action. The, the, the Arizona Cardinals looked like they, that you spun them around. Like, you ever play the, you know, the beer league dizzy bat thing? You know, okay. where you, you have to spin yes. around. That is honestly what they look like on defense. They didn't know where to look. They didn't know where to go. New member, Ashley Binder. Welcome, Ashley. Awesome to have you say hi in the Discord. Um, that's my take on this offense. Let's go back around the horn the other way this time and start with her with uh, with Sterling. What about Mahomes? We talked about him on halftime. I said he's going to throw five or six touchdowns. I was right. I just want to get. I want. I want you to acknowledge that and, and tell me how you thought QB one played today. Yeah, you're fucking nails, dude. Yeah, Mahomes came out and it was just more of the same. He's fucking incredible. And, and again, I wasn't worried. But part of me was nervous after the second half in the Bengals game in the playoffs where I go, what's going on? Is he in his dome? Is there something that we don't know about? He comes out and just goes, no, no, no. I'm still that dude. First month of the season, he has been the best quarterback in the NFL ever since he took over as a starter. The best in basically NFL history. First month for him is unreal. He did everything he wanted to do. Tony Romo was in awe of how good he was off platform, moving around. He he looks, I don't want to say better without Tyree Kill, but he looks like he's going through the reads quicker. He's taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one opportunities when Travis Kelsey's doubled. He finds the guy in single coverage and he hits him. Uh by the way, Travis Kelsey, what was it, eight catches on nine targets, 121 yards and a touchdown. Did that yeah. seem almost quiet to anyone else? It's just crazy how we almost take that for granted at this point. But no one is better than Patrick Mahomes. I don't care what anyone says. Rodgers with the two MVPs, Josh Allen, it's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Absolute boss performance. Verderan? No. I, it reminded me of that line from The Incredible Hulk. It's like, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. That's <laughs> what it felt like. Like when they threw that fourth touchdown, he put his four fingers up. I was like, oh, it's over. Like it's yeah. – like he, if they will let him throw for eight, he will do it. Um, he just he goes to another. This is why I I, look, I hate all these like who's better than who arguments because they're dumb and they're stupid and they're made for TV and they're made for social media interactions. But like nobody is better than him. Nobody. When he gets on a roll, like it's just it's impossible. That throw he made to Kelsey down the seam for thirty five yards is insane. But that backer was right in Kelsey's pocket. Didn't matter. Didn't even matter. It was like the guy wasn't even on the field. What was the other throw? Oh, it's the Sky Moore, the 30 yard or more, where he was going to his left and just on a dime was like, that's nice, fine, and just yeah. flicked it like, like a shortstop coming across the bag right on him. Right. And, and credit to Sky Moore, by the way, it was a really nice play after the catch. But how many plays with Mahomes are you just like, th there's no other person on earth who's doing that, including Josh Allen, including Aaron Rock. Like, there's nobody who, and, and I guarantee you, and I'm not like one of these people like, geez, need the attention, but. It won't get talked about that much because he does it so much. Like people are just so used to yeah. it with him that it's like, oh yeah, of course he did that. That's what he does. He does it five times a week. He was brilliant. Um, I thought for the most part the pass protection was very good. Um, the Cardinals defense stinks. Let's I mean, let's also note that. But 44, pretty damn good. And yes, I think they were absolutely motivated by all this stuff with Tyree Kill. 
they're dead. They can't, you know, how are they going to play without them? I don't think it's a coincidence that Mahomes at the goal line was throwing and throwing. I mean, they were going to prove a point. I don't, I, I, they didn't miss him today. Maybe they'll miss him at some point, but Tyreek, they, you know, his team won 20 to seven. They only scored 13 points offensively. Um, the, the Chiefs looked pretty damn good, and Mahomes was, as usual, he's God in cleats. He is God in cleats. We've got a new member, Matt Peterson. Thank you for joining, Matt, and some, uh, supporting the show. We'll see you in the Discord, buddy. Um, and we got a, a super chat from Super Squid. Uh, this is one of those stress-free games where uh, you can have the game on in the background and do chores around the house. I can't do that. I need to watch no. every second of Chiefs football. No. Um, but no but God bless you. But, <laughs> yes, right? But, but to Super Squid's point, you're right. They're not all going to be like this, right? Most of them are not going to be like this. And it's nice to have these games, especially the first one of the season, where you can really enjoy it, celebrate, and head into a huge game on Thursday night against the Chargers. Adam Best, by the way, out there, make sure you hit that thumbs up button on YouTube. We're only at 107. There's 400 of you watching. Let's get it up to 400. Adam, is is Mahomes the early favorite for the MVP with Josh Allen right now? I think so. You know, expectations are a big part of the, the equation, right? And I think people kind of got tired of hearing about Mahomes. But you take Hill out of the equation and uh, the media kind of acted like the mainstream media, like Mahomes is going to take a big step back. But tonight he hit nine different targets. He set a career record with 12 straight completions. It was just a virtuoso performance where it, it looked like he's just on a mission to not show that he can hit the big plays or that he has the best arm. He wants to beat you with his patience, with his mind, with his determination, with everything he's learned in tangible wise. And when you possess the, the freakish uh, athleticism and just God-given talent that he has, you know, when he's making, like, like Verdram said, these kind of, across his body shortstop throws and they're just so routine we just kind of shrug and say hey, we've seen it 50 times before and sterling hit on something it, it does look effortless and that's because mahomes and kelsey have just been doing this at will for so long uh yeah. that it's hard not to take it for granted a little bit but uh yeah they were just firing on all cylinders he's he's the best and i think he and Josh Allen right now, you kind of you kind of have to say who can get in the way of this rematch. I can't I can't wait, man. Verderam, is that like <laughs> I know it's early. Scott got oh, already, right. man. One one thing one already Scott saying. Got correct. Can't wait. I mean that, <laughs> right. I, I should come into the year. I do my power rankings for every week. We go up Tuesday on fans. I got they were my number one and two teams. Like they're the two yeah. best teams in football. I don't think it's close. I don't. And I've said that all you want. Like, for an example of why I don't think that, I think the Cardinals and the Raiders are similar teams in terms of their talent level. I don't think – like, maybe the Raiders are slightly better, but I don't think it's, like, egregious. We're going to find out by the way they play next Sunday. Um, I think they're fairly close. Like, if, there's, if those two teams play each other ten times, you might be, like, five and five or six and four. The Chargers today didn't turn the ball over. Herbert played really, really well. They had six sacks, I believe. Of Carr. Carr threw three picks. The Raiders were driving with two minutes to win the game. Like the Chargers just like allow teams to hang around and hang in there. The Chiefs beat the piss out of Arizona. There wasn't any like, oh, well, you know, maybe the Raiders are going to. There was one time the Cardinals had any shot to get back in this game. It was right before yeah. halftime. It was 20 to 7. Juju fumbled. And the Cardinals had the ball on the Chiefs side of the field and they were getting it out of the break. And the Chiefs. Stopped him on four downs, took the ball. Butker, with like half of a leg, kicks a 54-yarder right down the middle. That would have been good from 60. And then they come out of half. If memory serves, they immediately three and out them. They get the ball back and go right down the field and score a touchdown. Like, it was dominance. And that's why, like, everybody talks about the Chargers and the Ravens. Listen, the Ravens are fine. They beat the Jets 23-7. to I'm not going nuts over that. The Chargers barely beat the Raiders at home in a game where Carr was atrocious for three and a half quarters. Um, the Bengals lost to a team that – I don't know if you guys watched that game. Oh, yeah. Pittsburgh – I mean, Trubisky yeah. basically threw that ball like like he he has no arms. Like he has like, – yeah. he doesn't have an elbow. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so, 
you look at these teams, like it's it, uh, it's week one. Like, I'm not going to get way ahead of myself here. But, yeah, I mean, how could that not be encouraging? They went out and absolutely beat the shit out of a team that won 11 games last year, and they did it in their building. Yeah, on the road. I, this is an interesting stat as well, I think, and let's keep, keep talking about the offense here. Are we, we talked about Mahomes. He was brilliant, five touchdowns. The running game. Well, what do you know? The yeah. Chiefs can run the ball. 27 carries as a team for 128 yards, 4.7 a clip, and their leading rusher? Does anybody know who it is off the top of their head? No cheating? I would go so there. Pacheco. It's Pacheco. It was Pacheco because of the end of the game when he came in, in from garbage time. Movie. A little yeah, garbage gar- time, right? In, in garbage time, but you know what? Um, hey, 12 carries, 62 yards, busted off a 22-yard run, had a, t- had a touchdown. There go the jitters for the rookie. Uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, obviously, we got to talk about him, right? Um, left oh, for yeah. dead yeah. by everybody, including me on all the fantasy teams that I had stock on. I sold him off. Um, been there, and I, I said the night of the draft, I'm, letting, I'm, I'm, I'm not keeping Clyde. And as such, he will now have his breakout season. I don't know if I can go that so far as to say that, but seven carries for 42 yards uh, and then three catches for 32 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, let's start with you, Adam. Is is Clyde, is this it? Is he finally going to start living up to expectations? I've been as down on him as anybody. And part of that has been because his yards before contact, he just looks slow hitting the hole previously. Tonight, he didn't look slow. So I was kind of skeptical heading into the season about the gallbladder and all the other health stuff, but he has been banged up. He did come in as a rookie during a COVID season, which didn't allow him to fully integrate like most rookies would be able to. And he looked spry tonight. He looked not only spry uh, north south, but, you know, slipping out into the flat in in the receiving game. He kind of looked silky smooth as a receiver too. Uh, I think he averaged six yards per carry running the ball. Uh, So let's build on it. I, I would, I've been kind of counting on the chiefs not really having him become something like he was tonight. But if he does this every week, even two thirds of this every week, they're going to be in great shape. Yeah. Everybody in the chat seems to agree. Chad says, uh, you know, Clyde had some good vision, but no breakaway speed. Um, Nate, Nate says spry AF. Uh, Matt Verderam, I mean, the thing that jumps out to me when I look at this running back room isn't so much, oh, Clyde Edwards Alaire is going to be a star. It's just depth. It's these guys are good, capable players, and behind this offensive line, they can hurt you. What's your take? By the way, just a quick um, – so, uh, importantly, Andy Reid's at the presser right now, says it um, with Trey Smith, the ankle, they're just going to kind of see how he does with it. Uh, it doesn't sound awfully concerning. Trent McDuffie strained his hamstring, so he'll probably be out Thursday. I'm guessing that's my two cents, not Andy's. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not terrible. Like that, that's not the end of the world. You, you know, okay, they can live with that. Justin Watson hurt his chest. Uh, Mahomes landed on his wrist, and it, um, and and of course Butker with an ankle. So, while they had some guys get banged up, thankfully it doesn't sound like any of them are like, you know, oh my god, things that you're you're terrified about. <laughs> uh, of course they do have the short week, so we will see. But I thought, listen, if they have to play, you know, Allegretti, they'll they'll be okay. It's not the end of the world. Um. So, I, listen, uh, to answer with the, with the running backs. I think it's still going to be a lot of by committee. Pacheco came in. He played well. I know people are like, well, it's garbage time. That whole gar- game was essentially garbage time. After it was 14. The Chiefs just killed them. So, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I thought they looked good. I mean, they, you know, the Chiefs never run the ball. That's not what they do. They, they ran 27 times today for 128 yards and a touchdown. Um, by the way, do you know this is the, according to NFL's next-gen stats, this is the first time in Mahomes' career he was blitzed more than half the snaps? Wow. Bad move. Blitz. Bad move. Yeah, not not it's not bad. the smartest thing you the team's ever done. So they blitzed him uh, 55% of the times, and he finished 30 of 39 for 360 and five touchdowns. I hope <laughs> other teams follow suit. Um yep. but uh, just just to illustrate what a hilarious ass kicking this game was, they outgained Arizona 488 to 282 and literally didn't even try for the last 15 minutes of the game. We're just like, it's fine. We'll give you yards for time. We don't even want yards. It's cool. Like, the Chiefs could have legitimately outgained them if they want to in this game, like 550 to 230 or something. Like, it just 
They had they had 35 minutes of possession time. But here's for me, they only took three penalties, which is really nice to see. Um, they, you know, the turnovers, they did have the one. You'd like to clean that up a little bit. On third down, they were five of eight. Defensively, they were three of 12, the Cardinals were. So they, were, they, had, they had a great third down efficiency rating. I will say that's the one thing I wanted to bring up quick. We're not, we haven't talked about him yet. We're talking about the offense because Mahomes was incredible and they did all these different things. That defense today, like I know they're out without Hopkins and more. I understand all that. They held them to seven points until it was completely and utterly garbage time. That's a young defense, like a really young defense on the road, like first game out of the shoot. I thought Carl Hopkins looked really good. I thought McDuffie looked good until he got hurt. Watson played really well when he came in for him. I know he gave up the touchdowns. To be fair to Murray, it was a great throw. And it was it was about the only place you could have put him. Brown made a nice sliding grab. They looked great. Like that, you know, Thornhill looked amazing. I mean, coming across the field, that pass break we had was awesome. Uh, he had a deep pre- uh, ball breakup on, on on Brown in the third quarter. I thought, I thought the defense was going to be the big takeaway. They're going to score points. I know they're going to score points. If they're that good defensively, or even near it, good night. That will be courage for everybody that they play for that good defense. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely. Matt, you're having some internet issues. You're going to have to call the Comcast guy. Just a little bit robotic, but we still got you. Let's talk about the receivers while we're still on the offense because this was a big thing, right, coming into the season. And let us know what you thought in the chat of the receivers. I want to get some of you guys in here as well. Um the receivers w- was a big question mark. What's it going to be like? How is how are they going to use Juju? Is MVS only going to be a deep threat? How involved is Sky Moore going to be? Well, you had your answer. Travis Kelsey, eight receptions, 121 yards and a touchdown. I think we all knew he would be leading the team in receiving. Juju Smith-Schuster, though, as Adam pointed out earlier in the show, looked pretty good. Sterling, what do you think, man? Oh, I don't get to talk about Mr. Sunk Cost? No, I'm kidding. Uh, (laughs) When it goes to the receivers, this is basically what I thought the breakdown was going to be. Travis Kelsey, one. Juju, two. MVS, three. After that, you'll see a sprinkling of Sky Moore. It'll take time. As the season progresses, you'll probably see more Sky. But early on, this is what I expect. Uh, With McCall Hardman, that was maybe the one negative in this game. He still does not have a great rapport with Mahomes. It just feels like they're always a little off, even when he's open on those deep balls. He can be open, and it still seems like he's the only guy that doesn't get hit by Mahomes on it. I don't know what it is. They just seem to be a little off, and it is slightly frustrating. It feels like he doesn't always lay out for it, right? Even if you might not get it, it looks like the ball will be right on his fingertips. Just lay out for it. See what happens. It just feels like that does not happen. He did have a great touchdown uh, that one route was phenomenal right the one in the end zone great little route um but as a whole the receivers look good uh i have no complaints whatsoever mahomes hit what was it 10 different guys was it 10 something like nine 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 guys i mean this is what it's going to be mahomes can literally go anywhere he will find the weak spot and take advantage of it jeremy cochran says juju and mvs seem like they fit in seamlessly our guy stacy smith I was a bit surprised MVS was uh, valuable over the middle. If that holds up, this offense is going to be hell to deal with. John Best, Sky Moore is the real deal. Uh, Raymond Chandler says, um, does Mahomes expect McColl to be faster? Yeah, look, uh, Mahomes missed that one, right? He missed it. He knew it. Um, it, it, it but, but that was there. And I think that's what's exciting is they did most of their damage with intermediate routes and running the football. And then you had this big shot and he's not going to miss that every time as matt connor joins us fresh from the uh editorial salt mines matt uh <laughs> the whole crew is here the whole aa crew for 2022 give us Looking give good. us your uh yeah give us your thoughts how you feeling i mean how do you not feel great about that win right i mean we're i was even like trying to come up with negative things and it was like juju fumbles injuries and then i'm starting to make up some shit so uh, you know i don't even know i don't even know what to say there i uh, six of six in the red zone, six of six in the red zone. Uh, the chiefs averaged 11th in the league last year at, uh, 2.6 out of 4.1 attempts today. They just took care of business where you have to take care of business. We saw Fortson come up big there. Um, you know, the halfbacks come up big there. Kelsey's always going to be a target that when he came down, Isaiah Simmons playing him 
like he did. Uh, you know, I'm just watching Kelsey's combination of hands, toughness, tracking, the timing he he has with Mahomes. That whole, I mean, you just can't you can't defend the Chiefs at this point. I you know, other teams will play them much tougher. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys have had a lot of fun unpacking all this. Isaiah Simmons looked like me trying to cover Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Like yeah. literally, in his defense, though, over, you like, do. tried to you stumble do. after it was ridiculous. In his defense, I think Travis Kelsey basically has a Stephen Hawking football IQ. You know, he really does. A, a young guy just he's going to get put in a blender every time. Yeah, yes. he knows where to, he knows exactly where to go. He knows when to turn around and sit down when he finds a space in the defense. He's absolutely terrific. Hey, if you're enjoying the show. And, and you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe, go over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. That really helps. Or the least you can do is lift a finger and hit that thumbs up button. If you're watching on YouTube, it helps more people join our growing victory party here, which is now well over 400 viewers live. Before we get off of the offense, I want to talk about a guy who I think is going to be a little bit of a, an unsung hero for the season. Can anybody guess who it's going to be? Fortson? Jody Fortson. I knew it. I picked him up in fantasy like this morning because I, I have shallow tight end depth. I saw, and I I saw like, that, by the way. Yeah. And I was like, this guy, like, if I'm ever in a pinch, I feel like there's like a 50% chance in any game he's going to at least catch it. He's going to have one catch for a touchdown. He did it today. Had another catch in the red zone where he ran hard, ended up getting called back on a penalty. Um, for uh, Creed Humphrey being downfield. You remember that hit he took, though, and stayed in bounds and kept going and would have gotten the first down? What are our thoughts on on Jody Fortson? Why, uh, you just joined us, so let's uh, let's kick it to you, Matt Connick. Yeah, I couldn't believe – I mean, you you mentioned that play. I, I thought he was going out of bounds, and then he got that hit. And that second effort, I mean, it was, it, it was so exciting. It was the kind of, like, tough – you know, I grew up watching, like, that – more of the Smash Mouth Chiefs um and yeah. like the, the vaunted offensive line of like Rofe and and waters and and wegman all that stuff and so um you know like forson's just got that great toughness what a great story overall a kid from valdosta coming back from the injury and i mean it, you know it's just great to see him succeed he's gonna live there in the red zone he'll probably have 10 catches on the season and eight will be touchdowns <laughs> yeah, it's just another weapon, right? It's another weapon for this offense. Uh, Sterling Holmes, what do you think? Jody Fortson, how many touchdowns for the year? Oh, let's go. Uh, I'll go with eight. I like that. We'll wow. go basically one every other game, just with you. Yeah. Ten catches, eight tutties. I will also say the blocking from the tight end group as a whole was very impressive. Jody Fortson, Noah Gray had a good block at one point, and early on, Travis Kelsey had three that were, that were helping spring Clyde edwards alaire I love folks who still say Travis Kelsey can't block. That was like a decade old, basically thing that was debunked in the past five years, but still folks keep bringing it up. Travis Kelsey is a complete tight end. I want to just throw that out there. The blocking from all three guys to me was way impressive. Matt Verderam, Jody Fortson. Yeah, I honestly, I think I said this like a week ago. I think he's gonna have like seven or eight touchdowns because when they get in the red zone, they're gonna call his number. Like they're gonna look yeah. for him because. Think about it. If you're guarding the Chiefs, right, and you have him and Kelsey and MVS and Smith Schuster on the field, he's the fourth guy you're worried about, and he's coming out of a tight end position, so you're going to put a linebacker on him. Well, he's going to kill most linebackers. He just is. He's too. He's too big. He's too agile and athletic. Yeah, I think like I definitely could see a stat line of him literally like 20 receptions and like eight touchdowns. That's fine. If that's what he does. That's great. But that's what they need him for. And I think you just saw today the full complement. They they could do everything. They could, they could, they could play bully ball. They could, they could spread you out and throw it down the field. Hard. Everybody's going to get on Hardman about like, oh, he only had whatever he had, like fifteen yards. He was inches away from having two long deep t- that were not his fault. He did his job. He got open. He'll have his day. Um, there's nothing to complain about from this game. Nothing. I mean, if you're if you're finding something to bitch about from this game, I don't have to tell you. <laughs> I mean, everything about this game was just about perfect for them. Outside of a couple injuries, it sound minor. Yeah, I, I, it, it's really incredible. You see these big receivers, and, and we talked a lot in the offseason about the Chiefs going big at receiver. And there were a lot of plays where that mattered, right? Just the sheer size of the man trying to catch the ball, to post up, to body somebody out on a slant, to make a catch that maybe if maybe if it's Tyree Kill is, is as explosive as he is, it isn't a catch because he takes a big hit. 
He's he's he get somebody's able to get an arm around him, right? Um, and I think that's really going to be great for Mahomes, and it's going to help him convert a lot more. And you're just not going to see as many three and outs that we used to see sometimes with this offense when they take a couple of deep shots and they wouldn't work out. All right, let's uh, let's get to the defense. We talked we talked through the offense. Uh, let us know in the chat your thoughts on the defense. If you have a question that you really really want to get answered, you can go the super chat route. We'll definitely answer it not required but um uh, there's a lot of you out there and i know everyone's shooting comments out so we want to get as many people in as we can all right let's talk about the defense a lot of young faces obviously their injury concerns hopefully mcduffie's okay and will be able to be back in a couple weeks with that hamstring injury hamstrings are ask coolio jones they're nothing to mess around with um and uh sometimes could take a while to heal so you don't want to push it um but all in all i mean again missing some guys on offense i said this at halftime the Cardinals are no slouch on the offensive side of the ball. Kyler Murray is a good quarterback. He is a dangerous quarterback. He moves the chains. He makes things happen. A.J. Green, not a spring chicken, but still can perform. Um, and, of course, Hollywood Brown is a talented receiver. We know that. But the Chiefs defense, for the most part, for me, it, it looked like the, the car, they made the Cardinals look like they just weren't ready, like that they needed another preseason tune-up. We, we don't. I mean, we're here to analyze the games. We'll do it. Let's, I mean, you both, they just kicked their ass, which is exactly what Murray said in the, in the post game. They kicked their yeah. ass. They, they beat them from soup to nuts. Arizona did nothing in that game. They had one drive the entire game when it mattered that they moved the ball. And other than that, they just, they got their ass beat for three quarters. And then it was a 30 point game. And the Chiefs basically started putting in like me, you, and, and it's like somebody's mother to play the, the last quarter. It was, it was everything. It was everything working in tandem. They had nice pass breakups. They're, they're, Front line, like they had three sacks. They had a lot more pressure than three sacks in the case. They were all of them. Clark looked very good. Carl Loftus looked very good. Dunlop had a sack. They brought Snead. We know he's a very good blitzer. Like they, they were great. Gay was all over the field. Bolton was Bolton. He made a bunch of tackles. Right. I was really impressed with Thornhill. Um, there was nobody in the in the secondary who were like, oh, he's getting burnt all the time. Right. It wasn't one of those games where like Murray missed like five guys who were wide open. He didn't. Like, I'm not saying he never missed a guy who was wide open. They have good coverage. They dominated that game. And again, if they are that, if they're even close to that good defensively, they're going to win a ton of games because this offense is going to roll up points. Like I've seen a few people say, well, you know, Thursday coming quick and you got to worry about it. Yeah, it's coming quick too for the Chargers. You think the Chargers are going to review that Chiefs film? And be like, can't wait to see them Thursday night at Arrowhead. <laughs> by the way, that line's already moving for Kansas City. So, I mean, yeah, the Chargers are good. By the way, the Chargers might be without Keenan Allen. So, that's something to watch. And JC Jackson. We'll see what happens with him. So, like, look, I, I gotta tell you, if, if you're if you're the Chiefs, like you're not like you respect the Chargers, but you're not quaking in your boots. You shouldn't be. Not after that. I, you know, the Chiefs will be feeling just fine going into that game. Can we talk about how they held Kyler Murray to only 29 rush yards? How in the past a running quarterback or a dual threat quarterback would have had 75 plus easy. This is a massive change over the past couple seasons. Uh, they kept them to 103 yards on the ground. I understand when you're behind, you're not going to be running the ball that often. But even when they were trying to early on, they just strictly could not. This Chiefs defense is a lot more complete. We saw the athleticism. We maybe saw some of the youth get exposed at times. And you can make the case again, without the majority of their wide receivers, it's a little tough test to take. But at the same time, what we saw was a complete defense and one that leaves me feeling very enthused. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely and fantastic. Go ahead, Adam. The Cardinals are notoriously fast starters. If you look back to both of the previous, previous seasons, Kyler Murray uh, was an MVP candidate. Last year, they won their first seven games. They should have won their eighth game if it wasn't for A.J. Green like not even trying and letting the ball get picked off at the end of the game. I don't know if you guys remember that, but notoriously fast starters, uh, Kyler Murray last season, his, his highlight reel was just insane. And you weren't seeing him other than that one run where he kind of got off and, and ran for about 25, something like that. They contained him. They contained him just, it was, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And I think, that uh yeah just looking great <laughs> they're looking great and and that was the question coming into this game right it was 
Well, you know, we know the uh, we figure the offense will will move pretty quickly, but you know, some young guys, new faces on defense, it might take them a little bit of time. And I actually, in my game prediction, I had the the Cardinals scoring a lot more points because I, I thought that, that the Chiefs defense would take a little bit of time to ramp up. And there were some like it wasn't a perfect performance, but I mean, three sacks, right? You get Carlos Dunlap involved in there. Turk Wharton gets a sack, um, and uh, four tackles for a loss. They defended seven passes in this game. Juan Thornhill, who said he's going to win MVP, didn't he? Um, or, or make all pro I this year? It, make it all pro. Thing. Yeah. Make it all pro. Two, broke up two passes. One, which which we mentioned at halftime. Uh, I think Sterling said he looked like he got shot out of a cannon. George Karloftis. We talked about this in the offseason. About George Karloftis, known for batting down passes in college. The Chiefs haven't had a lot of batted down passes from their defensive ends. Comes in, bats down a pass. Chris Jones being back in the middle. Bats down a pass. So this is really, really good news for the Chiefs. The tackles for a loss from Bolton, from Sneed, Legereus Sneed, with a sack, with a tackle for a loss, with a pass defended, with two quarterback hits. There's a lot of pieces moving on this defense. Berteram, what do you think? I mean, I see Gary saying, let's not get too excited. It was the Cardinals. Gary, bro, I don't care if they're playing Vanderbilt. Okay, They're 37 to 7. What do you want them to do to be impressive? Win by seventy. It's a, play, it's a playoff. They were playoff like, team. What, last what do you year. want them to do? Like I don't think the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are like an eight or a nine win team. But I mean, Jesus, man, like what would be impressive for you if they won by seventy five points? I mean, right. what, what do you need to see? Would Mahomes have to do a cartwheel while he threw a touchdown? I mean, I, come on. <laughs> I, like, what the fuck are we doing? I mean, they, they won by a million points. I'm a Mizzou fan, man. I just wanted to see a win. <laughs> I got my heart ripped what, out yesterday. What are we doing? I mean, come on now. I got, yeah. Look, by the way, uh, it, it should be noted, Mahomes just came out of the x-rays. Uh, his hand is wrist negative. So he said, just sore. Hopefully uh, it's not something that lingers. <laughs> the God. Cardinals um, were a good team last year, by the way. We're 11 yeah. games. Until yeah. Kyler Murray hurt his ankle and maybe Call of Duty. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but his whole, his whole video game thing. Um, they look like one of the best teams in the NFL. And I don't think it was a matter of them not being prepared today. The Chiefs are just on a mission. Yeah, they're 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 on. Chiefs are on a different level, and that was clear. There's a lot of talk, and as as we bring as we roll into the second half of the podcast here, which is also uh, just like the first half, brought to you by Kansas City Beer Company. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, there's a lot of talk in the chat about Willie Gay. Willie Gay being out of position. Willie Gay had a rough day. Um, I didn't notice a lot of that. To be fair, it's tough first time through it. broadcast. Um, did any of you, uh, yeah, or, or if you yeah. guys can elaborate in the chat? Yeah, he would have been my nitpick. There are a few times where uh, he looked out of position, some bad angles. Kyler Murray kind of put him in spin cycle once, uh, and he got caught up on a block. But that's just extreme nitpicking, and and uh, you know Kyler Murray is a one of one if you, when he gets out you know, running. I mean, good luck. Even someone, Willie Gay is one of the most athletic linebackers in the league. And even he is no match for Kyler Murray in, no. in the open field. So yeah, uh, yeah. just I, minor nitpicks. I just think like, you know, as we get ready for Thursday night, you're going to be like, oh man, I'll tell you, she's look good. She has chargers. It's like <laughs> the chargers barely held on against the Raiders as Carr was throwing picks like Oprah, giving out like, like gifts at a show. I mean, what, what are we doing? Yeah, right. What? No, it doesn't mean, by the way, the NFL is very week to week. It is a week to week league. The Chargers could come out and pants the Chiefs on Thursday. That is totally possible. But, like, if you want to sit there and play the whole, like, based off week, based off week one, the Chiefs are going to roundhouse the Chargers in four days. Now, again, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that because I, I do think, like, every game is unto itself. So my father texted me eight times in a row. Um, I, look, I think. Like, I think realistically speaking, it's going to be a really good game. And week one's not going to have any bearing other than any injuries, right, for week two. But mm -hmm. people get way too into this, like, well, you know, they played this team. Arizona was a good team last year that I do believe will compete for a playoff spot this year. And I don't care that they were without Rondell Moore. Like, Hopkins matters. Okay, J.J. Watts does not matter anymore. He's been a shell of himself for three years. Chiefs killed them. Like, do you really think that if they had those guys, the Chiefs would have lost this game? Like it would somehow like maybe maybe it with Hopkins and more and all these maybe it's like four or five points different. I mean, who cares? They killed them. So I don't 
I don't get into all that stuff, man. The bottom line is the Chiefs played a complete game. And in the end, I think you walk out of that thing going, look, if they play anywhere near that level defensively, they are going to beat a lot of football teams going forward because the Cardinals are a pretty decent team. And, you know, who you don't know. You don't know. Like, I don't. The Niners, I like the Niners. I think the Niners are talented. They just lost to the Bears. Okay, it was a monsoon, though. Come on. Was, well, let, 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 let's Bears say what too. it is. The no, Bears I agree. A you know, time, out, time out. I will say this. When the Bears scored those two touchdowns, it was the driest part of the game. If I watched the entire okay. game. I, I, I'm just full of transparency here. I'm just. They had the worst roster in the NFL. They are. The they Bears are ass. God. They are two scoops oh. of ass. I am not disagreeing with you guys. I'm just saying I'm putting some context here. When Trey Lance got the ball in the fourth quarter, it was okay. they even the announcers go, "This is the most rain we have seen right. since pregame." There was puddles. Right. It was a fucking that, lake. You could slip and slide. That's fine. Eight. That's all fine and well. It was also a monsoon for the Bears. Like you scored ten points in that game. Give me a break. You have if that was the Chiefs and they lost the Bears, the last thing I'd be bringing up is the rain. I'd be you've got to be kidding me. You lost yeah. that bum fest. Okay. I, by the way, I'm just outside of Chicago. Patrick's in Chicago. Okay. It has been pouring here all that. I'm pretty sure that's why my internet went to shit for a minute because I heard a pretty loud thunderclap. Look, they. My, the bottom line is, like the Niners are probably going to be a little bit up and down this year. I think they're really talented, but Lance is going to be inconsistent. The Rams, I don't, if the Rams play the way they played week one against Kansas City, I got news for you. The Chiefs will beat them more than by 20. And the Bills would have if they didn't turn the ball over. My point is, I think you look at each game unto itself. The Chiefs killed Arizona. They're 1-0. and You're happy as hell about it. You move on. You play the Chargers in four days. Let me tell you something. They win that game, they're going to be feeling real good. Then you're going to be sitting there 2-0, and and you got a week and a half to prepare for a team that just tied Houston. Okay? So I, I think you're, you feel all of a sudden like, hey, they're in, they're in a good spot. But right now, they played one game. They dominated the game. Feel good about it. Matt Connor is the editor of Arrowhead Attic, where you should be getting all of your Chiefs news and opinions all week long. There's going to be a, an avalanche of content starting tonight all the way through the week. What are, the, what are your storylines from this game and heading into, uh, and heading into this Chargers game? I mean, I just, I just think not enough is made about the defensive depth and, and the changes. You know, like, like this is the kind of game – Sterling said this earlier. You know, like Kyler goes for 29 yards. Really, most of that was on that one run, right? Every time we face a Lamar, every time we face a Josh, what we end up doing is crying foul over the fact that Ben Neiman's getting so much time, that Dan Sorensen is, is, is starting over Juan Thornhill. In this game, we see Jalen Watson coming in and playing over his head as a seventh-round rookie in his first start. And you start to realize, front to back, you see George Karloftis as a motor never turning off, right? And suddenly you begin to go, holy hell, this effort to get younger, faster, sleeker at every level is what makes the difference between, okay, you burned us once, we now we'll learn our lesson. Uh, yeah, Murray didn't do it again. He, he just didn't. He couldn't do it again. So I, you know, I get maybe, you know, maybe Willie got spun around on that play. I, I get that. Maybe you could pinpoint some certain things here and there, but, but overall the talent level here, there's not the one guy on defense that's always going to be the mismatch that we're all crying foul over. Like get, like get an answer here. They have an answer now at every position. They have, they have reason to hope at every position. Um, and so I, I think the depth I mean, even after McDuffie left, no, no one was throwing at McDuffie in the preseason. Now no one's throwing at him, you know, in the, in the regular season because we knew he was going to sit in the hip pocket of whoever he's covering. Um, I just think that sort of youth, I think the learning curve is only going to make it that much better. I, I just can't believe how good this defense looked early on and knowing how good they're going to be in week 17, you know, after, after a full season together. It's a great point. It's very exciting to think about how this young team on defense will grow. Go into the chat a little bit. Um, we've got uh, Caleb Dye. He's Chiefs Kingdom, Florida. What's up, Caleb? Representing down south. Kyle Walker says they're young on defense and they're going to make mistakes. But for week one, they looked pretty damn good. I agree. Max Arquilla, uh, Arquia uh, asks, um, how was McDuffie? Before he left with injury, you didn't hear about McDuffie because he was doing a good job he's taking care of his man wasn't getting targeted um theo theo says uh justin reed should take some extra reps with the kickers this week yeah you think by the way we didn't talk about Har harrison butker very much um and we're, we're we're going to uh 
right now. Um, Harrison, because uh, Sterling has an award to give Harrison Bucker. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it to him and let him do that. Yeah, for me, uh, Harrison Bucker won the Kurt Gibson Willis Reed Award, where you come back from serious injury just to show some serious stones and be a fucking badass. A one step 54 yarder? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've never seen Bucker that jacked up to after he hit it. He hit it and was he was pumped. And that's yeah. a guy who doesn't show necessarily a ton of emotion. That dude knew, yeah, one step from there was incredible. If you want Justin Reed to continuously do the kickoffs, that's fine. But if he can still get one drop 54 yarders, uh, leave that to Bucker. Reed made the one nice extra point. That was an absolute bomb. Give him credit. But that second one was shanked. Uh, let's leave <laughs> Bucker the kicking duties except for kickoff. Give that to Justin Reed. I'm okay there. The Chiefs trotted out a safety to kick an extra point, <laughs> drilled it. And then we're like, what do you think, Justin? A kickoff? It's like, yeah, right through the uprights. That's fine. Meanwhile, the Bengals, just nobody who can snap the ball. Just nowhere to be found. Like, no James Winchester that. appreciation post right now. James yeah. Winchester, thank you. I mean, you know, in this conference, all, all kidding aside, like, that could be the difference between them making the playoffs and not. That could be the difference between being a two seed and a six seed. Like, that stuff matter. The Colts tying Houston, that could – I mean, those ga- those games, you know, people always say, you know, 17 games, you know, it's a sprint. It's not a – or it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, some people would argue. But you always hear that idea of, like, it's early. It's early. Put it in the context of a baseball season. It's like if you started playing in the middle of September. It all matters. Every one of these games matter. And, you know, look, for the Chiefs, it was a laugh or it didn't matter, right? Like, Justin Reed could have missed every one of his kicks. It would have made no difference. But they were able to have a quick change and a big issue, and they just, just played right through it. And the Bengals needed an extra point or a 29-yard field goal and just completely, completely screwed the pooch, couldn't handle anything. Stuff matters. By the way, somebody's asking who's the backup long snap for the Chiefs. It's Kelsey. Yeah. I, I You know, Bucker was – he was fired up on one of those late extra points he hit. I, I think he was – he sprained his ankle pretty bad. I mean, you saw the clip, right? Like he was totally turned his ankle and he was, I, I just really love that. He was still really fucking fired up when he was hitting extra points late in the game when it was pretty much all decided. Cause he, he's probably like, I can't believe I just made that. I'm so goddamn uncomfortable. Absolute boss. And then Justin Reed. I mean, that's a guy, at least on those kickoffs, like you, you could have him practice this week. If Bucker's ankle is, you know, needs some healing. You could you could just have him do the kickoffs next week, and right. and and let Bucker just bring him in for field goals, let him rest that ankle as much as possible. To have a guy in that your team like that is super valuable. If Butker can kick field goals and extra points, yeah, the, the big value in that is you don't have to waste a roster spot on bringing on another kicker. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean that that's the value of it, right? You could just say, look, who cares? Like we'll just have Reed kick it through the end zone. You know, I mean, it probably limits if you want to do like directional stuff, but who cares? I mean, that's not the end of the world. Like, kick it through the also, end zone. Also, the, the other option is he rips, dude. It's an extra guy. It, it, Justin Reed can lay guys right. lay guys out. Bucker's not going to lay anyone out. Think of that too. Reed's an oh, extra that's a great guy point. to fucking lay the wood. Honestly, should he do kickoffs? For, like, I I haven't seen him kick like a million of these, right? So maybe he, every once in a while he shanks one of those, and 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 you know we don't want that. But like, if he can do that consistently off the tee. Should he be doing kickoffs for uh, that? I mean, that is a fantastic point, which we have not considered yet on this podcast. Adam, one of your safeties is then, then tired, you know, for the start of the defense. I don't, that's something to consider. The other he thing about to go tear it off down there, right? You know, you could kind of jog and lay some wood. He seems like a tear it off kind of guy though. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, how many times have we seen like the kickers, the last guy, right? It doesn't happen a lot with Dave Tobe. Uh, you know, uh, uh, special teams, but like how many times have we seen the kickers, the last guy and he's totally, you know, he's got no chance. It's true. That won't be the case. If Justin Reed's out there. You're more likely to get injured on, on, on special teams too, though. So I, 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 I don't know if people are watching some of football right now. I'm sorry. The card, the, yeah, the Cardinals, the Cardinals didn't play all day. Uh, the, the Buccaneers are playing the Cowboys right now. And the Cowboys just tried what I would best describe as a, fake pitch double reverse 
And you're not going to believe it, but it ended in an eight-yard loss that almost went for like a 15-yard loss. It was a, it was a hilarious play. Like, it, like one of those plays, the second it started, you're like, this is a disaster. And it just kept somehow getting worse. It was well done. Mike McCarthy's, uh, what was it? I think it was his third play call of the season. We're, we're off and running. One more silver lining with Butker's injury. You've got the best player on the planet under center. Fourth and, fourth and second, fourth and third, fourth and fourth. Just go for it. Just go for it. And, and they did that and they scored. Uh, so anything that encourages Andy to go for it and give the best player on the planet the ball, I, it's not necessarily a bad thing. All right. It's time to hand out some hardware as we approach the hour mark here for our segment, Earning Their Arrowheads. Before we give out our arrowheads, I have one special award to give out. We've already given out the, the Kirk Gibson Award to, to Harrison Bucker. We've given this one out on the podcast before. It's one of my favorite ones to give out. The Patrick Mahomes Award for Passing Superiority goes to Patrick Mahomes. Always a good day when we can bust out that award. Yeah, golf clap for Patrick Mahomes. All right, let's get to earning their arrowheads. Let us know in the chat who earned their arrowhead for you today. Let's start with Matt Connor. Who's getting an arrowhead from you today? Uh, there are other players that we could talk about, but I'm going to go with Clyde edwards elaire because he had 70 uh, yards from scrimmage in the first half, two early touchdowns. Yeah, after an offseason in which, you know, remember Clyde – showed up on our podcast to give us an exclusive uh, talking about the fact that he was injured uh, last off season, recovering what 50 pound weight loss from gallbladder surgery. And then said, you know, he was um, healthy for the first time this time around. So, um, you know, I just, I love seeing him. This off season has been such a kind of a weird ride overall for, for running backs. Ronald Jones was heralded, you know, in, in, uh, in March and April, then we draft Pacheco and he gets all the love. And then he, then he doesn't get all the love in the preseason. Uh, but so I, all, all three guys given a chance today did a great job. So that whole room deserves a lot of applause, but it was great to see Clyde get the first half success and, you know, really show he's still a valuable part of this offense going forward. All right. We got, uh, I agree. Clyde, great game from him. Got some ones in the chat. Timo says, Juju. Tone B, Furious George, USAF Chiefs fan, Justin Reed. What's up, brother? Uh, Jeremy Cochran uh, said the five wide sets. I love it. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's kick it back to you, Adam. Who gets, who gets some arrowheads from you? Go with my guy, Chris Jones. He was just so disruptive early that it kind of felt like the Cardinals just didn't have a chance on offense. He was just everywhere. And, um, I'm hoping he's just healthier and in a better place this season because when we see that Chris Jones, the Chris Jones that we saw in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl when the Chiefs won, uh, it's just, you know, he's a top 10 defensive player in the league. And he's the, if it wasn't for Aaron Donald, people would be talking about Chris Jones as the best defensive tackle in the league. Chris Jones is, and it's great. And it's one of those that we had to watch the game. You look at the stat sheet, yo, well, how did Chris Jones do for the Chiefs? Uh, one tackle and uh, a defendant pass. Oh, he didn't have a good game. No, definitely not the case. Very disruptive. Matt Verderham, who gets an arrowhead from you? Yeah, I mean, Jones is everywhere. He played really well. You could give the arrowhead the entire team, and you, you wouldn't be wrong. But, you know, I, I really – I want to give it to – I want to give it to Kelsey. Like, I – Everybody every year is like, well, you know, he's 30, whatever. Right now he's like 33. And you're like, well, he's going to fall. And then he goes out there and it's just the same stuff. He just kills you with routes. He gets wide open. Even on plays where he's not wide open, it doesn't matter because Mahomes just puts it right on him 30 yards down the field. Like he never drops the ball. How, how often does Kelsey ever make an error? Like really make an error. Like drop a pass. Go jump off side. I jump, jump, you know, jump on the, in the line of scrimmage. How often does he does he make a, a you know a, a route adjustment that's incorrect, right? Never. And I think sometimes like we're almost blinded by his brilliance because he's just so great all the time that it's like yeah well of course it's what he did. He is. People use that whole like one of one thing we talked about like Murray. Or, he is truly that at the tight end position. Like you, you could make a real argument he's, he's going to end up the greatest tight end of all time. And he just had another day today where it's like. Yeah, ho hum, 125 yards and a touchdown. Like, that's fine. And he's he's just unmatched at what he does. 
Absolutely fantastic. Twim in the chat says, Kelsey is my spirit animal. Raymond Chandler says, we take Kelsey for granted. Man, I try not to. That dude makes this offense go. He's absolutely fantastic. I hope he plays until he's 45. Jeff Gibbs says, big Trav. Uh, love it. Um, Ashley, Ashley Binder, new Arrowhead Addict podcast member, says Kelsey uh, was uh, – or Chris Jones, disruptive. Love it. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's give out some more Arrowheads. Sterling, you're up, buddy. Who's getting them? Furious George must have been curious – in training camp and the offseason because dude learned a lot and looked like a veteran at game one, week one. I said it when they drafted him, before they drafted him. I said the Chiefs would do well drafting someone like George Karlapis, a guy who can be inserted week one and make an impact. He does not have a steep learning curve. For a team that has struggled to hit at the edge position as well as develop guys there, George Karlapis was the perfect fit for them and this team. We saw it today. Sure, it wasn't a crazy impact. Before a rookie, pass defense, hits Kyler Murray once, didn't look out of place, was not overmatched, up against a very versatile mobile quarterback. That is huge. That was something I wanted to watch and look at all day, and Korloftis was up to the challenge. Yeah, that's what you want, right? It's You want this rookie to make an impact, and that's exactly what he's doing. First game, started in the preseason. Every game, George Karloftis has suited up for the Kansas City Chiefs preseason or regular season he has made some sort of impact he has turned your head and that is a damn good sign heading into this all right i'll wrap us up here um and i'm gonna go with I i'm gonna give a, a, an honorable mention to nick bolton the leader of the defense who had a tackle for a loss led the team in tackles with 10 but i gotta go legerious Sneed. eight total tackles one sack tackle for a loss pass defended two quarterback hits he is such a versatile player for this defense it, it, this is the kind of thing he was doing his rookie season. And I don't know what it is. Maybe having McDuffie on the field makes Spags feel like he, you know, he can use Sneed a little bit more for some of these blitzes and more exotic things. But hopefully uh, he continues this because if you've got a cornerback doing stuff like that, we always talk about how, how aggressive he is as a tackler. He's one of the best tacklers on the team. He's really physical. He's not afraid. He doesn't make a lot of business decisions out there other than, you know, doing good business for the Kansas City Chiefs. So he gets an arrowhead for me. Um, just absolutely fantastic glue guy for this defense. Super talented. Uh, any any last ones? Uh, Mr. Schwump says, good call, Alan. Appreciate you, brother. Um, Dan Norris needs a good call. Uh, <laughs> Nate S. says, George Carr swat is. Am I right? Very good. I like sack radies over here. And so, so radies, sack radies, I like that. Look, look at the Greek philosopher over here. <laughs> That's big. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We're Twin a nuanced says, podcast over here. <laughs> yeah. Twin says, good afternoon show. See you. See you this coming week as per usual. Uh, absolutely. Joan says, good team win. Mr. Schwamp, Humphrey had a nice game. Yeah. Right. Nobody's ever going to talk about Creed. I, I was Creed just, is good. I was literally just going to say the interior of their offensive line, which should include Alec Reddy, who, who uh, Red mentions here. Like, they, How many times is there pressure up the middle of Mahomes' entire game? I, literally, I don't think once. Like not one time. Anytime they got pressure, and they were blitzing the whole damn game, they yeah. didn't sack him once. Like if you're Vance Joseph, you're not devastating that age. You you blitzed all night and didn't even sack him one time. D didn't stop him once. I mean, so the interior of their offensive line is great. Look, that's going to be a big key on Thursday is their pass protection up front because that's going to be look. You're going to have Mac who had a couple sacks in this uh, uh, this this week against the Raiders. You're going to have Bosa coming off the edge. But the one place the Chiefs have a very clear advantage is in the middle of that line. They are much better than the Chargers here. And if they can kick those edge rushers out, that's going to open up lanes for Mahomes to run, to escape out of the pocket, and throw from behind the line. Like That is a huge key for them in that game. They can do that. I don't give a shit who's guarding the Chiefs. Like they, they will get if, if he's got three, four seconds, it's a ball game. He'll find somebody. Always does. So I think for the Chiefs, um, that's going to be a huge key. And I thought they were awesome today. Absolutely awesome. And yeah, I don't think the Chargers are going to be blitzing a lot because I don't think they're going to have to. So the Chiefs are going to see a kind of a different defense next week. Some marquee pass rushers are going to have to be careful with the football. They're going to have to hold up their protection. Uh, and I'm sure Andy Reid's got a plan for the Los Angeles Chargers. And I'm really excited to see what it is. All right, everybody. We got to start uh, 
moving towards the exit. We got to watch Sunday night football and uh, get ready for this big week of content that we have planned for you. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday as usual. Sterling Holmes, Matt Connor. They'll be, uh, they'll be hitting you with some of the fallout from all this. Start getting you ready for Chiefs Chargers. And then Adam Best and Sterling Holmes. The new show on Thursday. You guys, do you guys have a time yet? Wednesday. Uh, it's looking like 4.30. 4, 4.30? Okay. All right. All right. So around, the, around the usual time. Yeah, central yeah. time. So keep an eye on your notifications on Wednesday for our new show. Super fired up about that. Adam is also going to be providing, uh, once I get my shit together uh, and figure out how we're going to do it, a newsletter for our members only on a weekly basis. If you don't know, Adam's an absolutely fantastic writer. Absolutely tremendous. You can go back and read some of his old stuff on Arrowhead Addict. Super entertaining. He's going to be doing a newsletter for our members only. So if you want to get in on the action, if you want to hang out with us during Sunday Night Football tonight, in the discord channel consider becoming a member consider joining uh if not if you want to support us in other ways hit the thumbs up button on youtube or go over to apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review there ask us a question in that written review that you do and we will read it on the podcast uh any final thoughts gents before we get out of here i'll kick it to you first matt connor no i mean it's gonna be a big game man i'm 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 stoked for thursday i love what i saw tonight um and but bosa khalil mac that's gonna be yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun super fun sterling holmes who you can also listen to on the airways not just on arrowhead attic but on 810 sports in kansas city uh what do you think any final thoughts for the gang uh big shout out to the fans that traveled it was arrowhead southwest because there was a lot of red down there and it was not cardinal red Chiefs were loud, they were proud, and there was a lot of chopping going on. Congratulations to all the fans that traveled. That was awesome. Absolutely. Adam Best, any final thoughts from you? Yeah, Khalil Mack isn't playing against the uh, Raiders offensive line Thursday night. So uh, he, if he wants to get sacks, he's going to have to earn them, actually, this time. <laughs> we'll take it. Adam, by the way, um, I am absolutely annihilating your father in fantasy football. Have you seen the score? uh i saw it earlier i absolutely it's, appreciate it it's bad I'm, it's a i'm gonna have to be his, uh, what's that i'm gonna have to be a shoulder to cry on unfortunately yeah you will the old the old chief also a former contributor to airheadaddict.com i'm beating him 171 to 124 um Ouch. and I've, I've, got, I've got brady playing right now so matt verderham any final thoughts from you as we head off into the sunset here yeah, I'm finish stacking the box. The written column goes up Monday at six, and then at halftime of this game, I'm going to take my ass over to Target and get a box of Count Chocula and celebrate right. That's right. I saw somebody in the chat said they're having a celebratory bowl of Count Chocula. That's right. That is awesome. Um, last that's cool. thoughts from <laughs> last thoughts from the chat. Justin Hayes says thanks, dude. You are the best. Um, Red says who wants to watch Bucks Cowboys though? I get it. I get it. I'm a junkie though for for NFL football. Um, uh, it's a pretty Jay good Ward game. Says, you know, we could have yeah, a a com commanders in Jacksonville or something like that. Th you know? That's right. I'm, we're going to have some of those. Uh, Jay Ward says, uh, great. Uh, this must be in regards to Adam. Great writer and sick beard as well. I'm very jealous of the beard that Adam can grow. All right, everybody. We're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for your support. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out. Leave us those reviews over at Apple Podcasts and check out the awesome slate of content that we're going to have all week. We probably won't have the regular Thursday show with me and Vertoram because there's a game on Thursday. So we'll be here for the, uh, the halftime show and the post game show on Thursday after the chiefs whoop the chargers and take control of the AFC West for Adam best for Sterling Holmes for Matt Vertoram for Matt Connor. My name is Patrick Allen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week, but until then go chiefs. <laughs>